study of rational expressions just a little bit further. Um, let's work with what's called complex rational expressions. And really all it means is that I've got a set of fractions that I have to add or subtract, and another set that I have to add or subtract, and then I divide by those resulting fractions. And when I divide with fractions, I invert the second fraction and I multiply. So I actually get to use all of my skills for rational expressions. So first, and there's there are two methods to approach these problems, but I'm going to take the long approach, if you will, first. Um, because I would like to just remind you that there's no methods you have to remember other than that you have to add these two fractions. And so I left myself a little bit of room, and hopefully you can see this, to factor these denominators. And so there's the factored form of these two denominators. And so the least common denominator of these two fractions, I'm going to kind of write it over here. The LCD is the x plus 1 and the x minus 1, and the x minus 4. So these two fractions have to get those denominators. I'm not trying to clear the denominators. They have to get those denominators so that I can um, add them. So this denominator is missing the x minus 4. So this numerator has to be multiplied by the x minus 4. Remember, it's top and bottom, so this is going to be in here now. And then this fraction right here is missing the x plus 1. So the top's got to be multiplied by the x plus 1. Don't forget, it's going to be down here now. And as a result, I'm going to have upstairs, let's go ahead and multiply while we're at it. I'm going to have 1 times x minus 4, which is just x minus 4, and then 5 times x is 5x, and 5 times 1 is 5. So that 5x and that 5, all of those have to be added together and put over the common denominator of x plus 1, x minus 1, and x minus 4. So I'm just working the top part of this expression first. So right here, 1x and 5x is a total of 6x, and a minus 4 and a positive 5 is a positive 1. Again, over that common denominator. Now, let's do the same thing to the two fractions that are downstairs. So let's go ahead and add these two fractions. Totally forget that this even exists. You're working down here now. So you've got to factor this into x plus 1 and x minus 1. And then you've got to factor this into x plus 2 and x plus 1. So there's a, those, are those denominators factor. And their LCD, I'm going to kind of wrap this around a little bit, is this, this, and the 2, the x plus 2. So it's the x plus 1, the x minus 1, and the x plus 2. I've got kind of limited space here. So I'm looking for these two fractions to have all three of those. So this one right here is missing the x plus 2. So this 1 up here has to be multiplied by the x plus 2. In order that this fraction will have all three denominators. I'm writing it small so I don't want to go cross them off because i got to call that x plus 2. This is missing the x minus 1. So the 2 is going to have to be multiplied by x minus 1, and it'll become a 2x minus 2. And therefore, these two fractions will now have that common denominator. So again, let's take those numerators. This one, the 1 times the x plus 2 is just x plus 2. And then right here, the 2 times the x minus 1 is 2x minus 2. And by doing that, they share this common denominator now, which is the x plus 1, the x minus 1, and the x plus 2. And upstairs, i got to be careful. I've got to take this 1x and this 2x and add them together to call it 3x. Oh, wow, interesting. And this 2 and this minus 2, it's to be 0. So I don't have to write that down. And my common denominator, again, is the x plus 1 the x minus 1, and the x plus 2. But please remember, this was a complex rational expression. 
this had a big fraction bar in the center there. I added the two fractions in the numerator. I added the two fractions in the numerator. There is the numerator's answer. There is the denominator. I have to now take this and divide it by that. And when you divide, you multiply by the reciprocal. So let's copy this one down. So we have the 6x plus 1 over its common denominator of x plus 1, x minus 1, and x minus 4. Again, I'm going to divide, so I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. So this right here, I'm going to flip. So I'm going to put the x plus 1, the x minus 1, and the x plus 2 in the numerator, and the 3x will go in the denominator. And when you multiply algebraic fractions, you factor everything. It is factored. 6x plus 1 doesn't have to have anything done to it. These are not alike, the 6x and the 3x. This is um, two factors, 3 times x. This is a term, I'm sorry, this is a binomial that contains two terms. It can't be factored. So unless I had a binomial downstairs that was 6x plus 1, that's the only way I could reduce this. So what I can reduce, though, is x plus 1 over x plus 1 is equal to 1. And x minus 1 over x minus 1 is equal to 1. But that's it. Nothing else can be crossed off. And the process, you know, I'm simplifying a complex rational expression. You might wonder, should I FOIL the 6x plus 1 times the x plus 2 in my final answer? It's not necessary. So the 6x plus 1 is one of my binomials. The x plus 2 is another. And then downstairs, I have this monomial and that binomial. I tend to put it to the monomial in front. Do not need to distribute. Do not need to FOIL upstairs. That's my final answer. I have simplified that complex rational expression. The next video clip is going to have a simpler problem, and I'm just going to show you a different method because it's effective. It's a, it's a pretty cool method. Um, it, just some people have trouble remembering why it works and, and how to do it. In this, the way, in this method that I just shared with you, um, you just have to add these two fractions and add these two fractions. I know it looks really messy, but you knew you had to have a common denominator to add fractions. So anyway, uh, if you'd like to see a, an example of a complex rational expression done a different way, easier problem, um, the next video clip will show that.